Hello, it's Karen Berniston, and I am back again today with another one of these recorded live videos, which means I'm speaking directly to the camera with no edits. And once again, we've had a technique request on our Karen Berniston pop-up peeps page on Facebook, and this request was from Brandy. She said she wanted to be able to use the Adirondack chair, but style it more as an indoor chair. So that's what we're gonna to tackle today. So I did a little work ahead of time, which is I went stash diving to find some good papers for my indoor scene. So the first thing I had to decide was my card size. I went with a five by five square top fold card out of brown cardstock. And then I found a piece of pattern paper that looks a little bit like floorboards for the floor, a piece of pattern paper that looks a little bit like wallpaper for the back wall. And then what I think makes an indoor scene come to life is when you add a baseboard. So that's just a piece of white cardstock with two score lines put in it. Okay, so now I have to decide what color I want my chair. And I decided to do green. There's some green in that wallpaper and I thought that would make a very pretty chair. So I cut a piece that's big enough to cut my pop-up chair. Okay, so that one I think is a four by seven, but you just need to have a little extra space at the top and the bottom. The reason you need that extra space is because what we're going to do is we're actually going to glue our floor piece and our wall piece to our chair cardstock first, but not everywhere. Only where it's not going to be cut by the chair, which would be across the bottom here for the floorboard. Let's do that one first. I'm just basically centering it-ish. And then across the top here for our wallpaper. I'll just make sure I have that in the same location as the floor. Okay, so now what I have is I have a piece of cardstock that's my chair color, and then I have my floor and my wallpaper on, but not where the chair is going to cut. Okay, so then from here, I'm just gonna do regular cutting. So I take my chair, my Adirondack chair, I use the alignment nubs to get it right over the fold of the card. I'm a fan of the Scotch removable tape that comes in the blue box. Okay, and then I send that through my machine with a regular cutting sandwich. Okay, so whatever machine you've got. Okay. Now let me get that off there carefully. I like that Scotch removable tape because it usually doesn't tear, but every once in a while it gets really sticky. You just gotta be real careful as you take things off. Okay, so now what I can do is I can remove the chair that's cut into the wall and the floor by just finding where the legs touch the floor and where the arms touch the wall and snipping on those lines. So those are score lines and we want to just make sure that we're only cutting paper so we're not cutting through the green cardstock, we're just cutting through the royal we apparently. I am not cutting through the green cardstock, I'm only removing the paper chair from the wall. And then I'm going to remove the paper chair from the floor. This is pretty common. You've probably seen this before on the Adirondack chair pop-up assembly video where we were doing it with beach, right? So you had sand at the bottom and you had sky at the top or whatever colors. I can't remember what was in that video, but you get the idea. So that's a very uh, common technique. You've probably, if you own this die, have done that before. And that's how you can get a different color in the background than your chair, you know, so instead of just cutting your chair directly into a piece and then having everything be the same color, you can put those pieces over the top and then you've got that multicolor scene. Okay, and then the only other thing that has to happen is that you need to go in after die cutting the chair, go around the chair to get the paper then tacked down permanently. And I'm just using my glue, but you can use a tape runner. If you can get in there with a tape runner, that would work too. Okay, so I'm just avoiding the green chair. Oops, don't want slats everywhere. We'll glue this down over here. And if I were not just filming a live video, I might take a little bit more time to make sure that was perfect, but we're just gonna go with good enough for today. Okay, so now let's train the green chair to fold. Um, I don't really care about the slats. I mean, I suppose it's a good idea to take them out um, so you don't have to worry about them falling out later. We're going to cover them because this is an indoor chair, but I suppose we can take them out. Let's just do that real quick. 
Maybe don't cut your hands. Maybe I should use something that's a little... Although, I don't know, I could stab myself with that too, I guess. Don't stab yourself. Oh, the dogs are waking up. And a lawn crew just pulled up outside, so we are probably going to have a little lawnmower serenade here in just a second. My office is right at the front of the house. Okay, so here we go. We're ready to fold this. So I like to fold in the middle first in both directions. But essentially what the middle is, is we want the seat of the chair to remain that valley fold while the arms of the chair come out as mountains. And then to make sure that our chair isn't sitting on the ground, we want it up in the air, we need to actually get down to where the, the legs of the chair touch the floor. So all the way down till the green stops, that's where they touch the, the floor. So that's where we would want to work those folds. And then the turn down spot is on that final slat. So see, now we've got the front part of the chair, there's the arms, and then all we need to do is work those folds right there in the back where the arms touch the wall. And once you've got it pretty much chair shaped, then you can, with your hands very close to the fold, so see how my hands are very close to the fold? You can just carefully close that. So it's a real easy fold on the Adirondack chair. And actually that's a pretty cool chair even if you just left it with slats in it. So, you know, you could just stick it inside. I mean, it's a cute chair. Someone might buy that chair and put it in their house. Um, I would buy this chair and put it in my house. But if you wanna make it look a little bit more indoorsy, so maybe something more like it was upholstered, then what you do is we're gonna to switch to embossing the chair instead of cutting it. So now we need to switch our sandwich. Okay, so I'm a Sizzix Big Shot user. I know a lot of you are as well. And for a Big Shot, when you want to emboss a die, you're gonna take your bottom cutting pad and, well, in my case, I have a solo thin adapter. If you have a flippy tab platform, you wanna go flip that first tab open so that you're on tab one. That's the level for an embossing um, sandwich. Then Sizzix sells this impressions pad that's hard and then the silicone rubber that's soft. I think I saw that they're now making these in white so black, white, whatever color, it doesn't matter. Um, those two go together as the base of your sandwich. You use a cutting pad on top, and that's how you would normally emboss a wafer-thin die. I'm gonna change that for today. This impressions pad is actually a little thicker than our regular bottom cutting pad. And for today, I'm just trying to get the lines of the uh, Adirondack chair into the piece. So I'm actually looking for less pressure. I'm really just looking to press that lightly into the cardstock. So I'm going to try just my cutting pad on the bottom. So I'm on tab one, cutting pad, then my silicone rubber. I'm gonna try it first this way. If I don't get enough pressure, I'm gonna double that by just folding it over. because so I'm just looking for more pressure. Or I could put some cardstock in it. All I want is enough pressure to get the lines of that Adirondack chair into that cardstock enough that I can cut out the piece that I want. So let's take a look. Okay, that is perfect. See, so it didn't cut through, it just embossed it, but it's easy for me to find the lines that I need to cut on because all I wanna do is just take out the middle part that's going to basically be a slip cover for my chair that's in my room that right now has slats in it. So I'm basically not going to keep the arms of the chair. I'm gonna just leave those the way they are in the pop-up and instead just grab the area around it. So it's pretty easy to just follow those lines. And like I said, just ex experiment with your sandwich a little bit to where you can get it to where it's not embossing so heavy, but just enough that you can see easily the lines that you're cutting on. Okay, and then we'll go across the bottom here. Okay, so this is essentially my slip cover to cover the interior part of that chair. Now it has, you know, kind of an interesting pattern in that the slats have been embossed into it and maybe you could just make something using it just like this. But I think the best way to remove that embossing texture is just replace it with another one. So for that, I would just go with an embossing folder. Now I just have a ton of embossing folders in my stash from my years with Sizzix, so none of these are new. No idea if any of them are still available, but just look through your stash if you have embossing folders, or if you're shopping for one, just look for things that are a good all over pattern that would look like you would see on a chair, you know, some sort of fabric-y 
sort of pattern. And I'm going to stick with the one I found that has an actual argyle pattern to it because that's a really common upholstery pattern. So then I can just put my chair in there, my slip cover, and kind of find a spot where I feel like the pattern is centered. And then now this is regular embossing. So we're already on the correct height in our machine. I just need to take my silicone rubber off. I've already got my cutting pad on the bottom on tab one and then just roll that through with another cutting pad on top. And what that embossing folder is going to do is it's basically going to replace the embossing from the die or at least disguise it. I mean, you might see it down in there a little bit, but you'd have to really look. And now you've got this cool upholstered seat cover for your chair. And one thing with this one being an argyle pattern, I think it might even look cool. I grabbed some of these little tiny pearls because I would think you could go in there and pick a couple of those spots since it's argyle and stick a pearl in there and it would look like a tufted seat. So anyway, maybe something like, I mean, I'm picking just the X's that are debossed. You know, it might take a little more time. If I was doing this for realsies to figure out where those pearls should go, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna put a few pearls on and we're gonna move on. Okay, so you get the idea. You could maybe make a little tufted pattern. Okay, so this is going to be the cover for this one. And probably best to let the card remind you where the fold is. It might still remember. It, I think mine does, you know, like as I hold it up there and then just right in the center start going like this, it, it does seem to remember that it had a fold line there. And then what I wanna do is basically shellac this onto my card so then I can fold it up proper. Oh, let me get rid of all these slats here. Okay, so for that, I would want the adhesive here on the pop-up chair since I've got all those holes in it. That way I don't have to worry about stray adhesive from my slip cover. I'm not totally a fan of having two or seven, well, two folds to line up because it's gonna have to go valley fold here and mountain fold here. So we're gonna just see how well I can do. Another option would have been to take the slip cover and actually cut it here so that it just comes to that point and it doesn't have to make the fold. That may have been a better choice, but we're gonna live video this thing up and MacGruber if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to put my slip cover right over my pop-up chair. Trying not to cover any folds that still have to work in my arms and things. Okay, give that a second. Okay, while I'm letting that dry, maybe I'll put a couple more pearls on. See, that one needs a pearl. This one needs a pearl. Is that right? I don't know, those end up in a straight line. Maybe that needs to be moved. Uh, it, pearls, pearls for tufted. Although I guess you wouldn't sit on them. Yeah, let's move these up here. Put one here, maybe over here. Yeah, that would look better if it's just on the seat back, right? Talkie, talkie, talkie. Okay, extraneous. Okay, hopefully my glue is set up now to where I can fold it. I think I'll start actually just getting that seat fold in it again. I mean, the pop-up chair should remember its folds, but of course the seat cover has not. Oh, there's the lawnmower. You guys can probably hear that. Let's see whose lawn they're mowing today. Oh, I don't know. They parked in front of my house, but they're mowing down the street. Okay. So, you get the idea. So let's see if we can get this now to be nice to us. And fold up proper with all of those extra bits. Oh my gosh, that actually worked. Look how cute. Okay, I'm a fan of this, you guys. Now, I think for an indoor chair, you could just leave these arms, but I actually think it would look cute to put the extra arms on it, too. I don't, I don't think that bothers me too much, like, you know, them sticking out and looking a little outdoorsy, but you can choose, and maybe you even want to do them, um, oh, would we do them maybe out of brown or something, like a little two-tone chair? Should we try it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, we need to get back into our cutting sandwich here. Oops, cutting pad. really did do a good job of getting the dogs fat and happy. I gave them a treat. They ate it very fast and very noisily. And then now they are sleeping. You can probably hear them snoring. 
Okay, so I've got my extra little arms. So see, is that cute or is that not cute? I have no idea. I can't tell. Maybe cute? Yeah, maybe they need to be green. Ah, oh, not brown. Let's just leave them brown. This is just a sample card anyway, so who cares? Okay, so we're going to make them brown. But what's nice is that when you're making your card, you can decide all sorts of cute colors for things. When you put the arms on the Adirondack chair, whether it's on the beach or in the living room, you definitely want the adhesive on the pop-up and then stick those arms to it. That way you don't have to worry about extraneous adhesive under these parts of the arms that are actually sticking out in the air. Okay, so let's take a look-see here. Cute, cute little chair. Kind of looks like one that was at my grandparents' house actually when I was growing up. Okay, so let's get this in our backing card. And then I'm gonna show you one more thing and then we'll call this good. Okay, so putting this in a backing card, the usual method is all you need, which is I think tape runner. Tape runner is my favorite. You just close the card down and you add that tape runner all over the flat parts of the card, avoiding the pop-up. And being a little generous, because this is the kind of card that gets opened and closed and opened and closed. So now I've got a whole sticky back to my scene, but the bottom, the floor, is not sticky. So that gives me the opportunity to place it in there and move the floor until I like the centering on it. And then I make sure that the fold is right here in the fold of the card. And once it is, then I can kind of let the back fall against the back here. And then that'll be stuck down. And then closing it up, let me get my tape runner. And we'll do this side. I actually think they moved the lawnmowers down the street a ways because I don't hear them as much now. Okay, so you get the choice of whether you close the card, but sometimes I'll just go ahead and do the same thing where I'm looking at it, looking at it, making sure that I like it centered. It, it shouldn't move if you, if you did that close the card against it, but this way at least you can make sure that you like all your edges and things. Okay, so there I've got my card in my room, in my living room. And then I think what really makes it look very room-like would be the baseboard. So I'll just tape runner that in. Do not need that little slat stuck in my adhesive there. Okay, so I just weave that behind the chair and place it on the back wall but up against the fold, just where you would see the baseboard. And it's just amazing little, little touches like that, how that kind of brings the room to life. And then one more thing I wanted to show is that you can make a pretty cool rug using the crosshatch ovals. So I'm going to choose three of them. And this one, I think I pre-checked, will fit in there as a rug. So this is gonna be my main rug. So I need a color for my rug and I picked one that I thought kind of went with the back wall a little bit, which would be this one. So I just need a piece that's big enough for my rug. Okay, so first steps, we're gonna take the biggest, no, it's not the biggest, it's the second biggest cross hatch oval in the set, and then I'm going to cut it first. Okay, and this does make a nice rug just on its own. So if you could be done, if that's what you want and you wanted lots of area in here for a sentiment, you could do that. But I'm actually gonna leave that in the die after cutting and take a little tape and keep it there. Okay, I'm gonna swap my sandwich out again for embossing. This time I am gonna do the proper sandwich, which is tab one, impressions pad, silicone rubber. Then I'm going to put those other two dies now in so that I can emboss them to create further rings of my braided rug. For the one that's the not cross hatch, so the next one down, I'm actually going to put it blade side up and I'm going to emboss the, the fatter area of that die, which is the back side, into that piece. And then I'm gonna put the cross hatch in there blade side down. So you can really kind of experiment with these type of effects with embossing your dies instead of cutting. And then I'm going to put that on my embossing sandwich and roll that through. And the reason I kept the big die on there during the embossing is because if I had removed it, then just the act of embossing would have really um, 
pressed out my um, crosshatch on that area and then it wouldn't be as crisp. So if I want to, if you want that to happen, then just take that die off when you do that next step. Oh, I have overlapping tape here. Let's see if I can get this off. Um, but if you want to keep it really crisp, then just keep the die in there. See, this is one of those spots where my tape's being a little grabby. Okay, let's see if I can save this rug, because it is a cool looking rug. Yeah, my tape is grabbing my cardstock a little bit. Okay, well, you get the idea. So, look at that. Isn't that cool? Looks like a rug. And I left, you know, space in the middle, because that's a great place for a greeting. And I can do that by layering up my last two ovals, or one, or, you know, whatever. Maybe stamp a greeting and then cut it out with that and put it there. Or maybe I'm just going to stamp right on this. That might be kind of cool. Or even put like a die cut, cut greeting right there. So anyway, that will be the rug for my room. So anyway, Brandy, I hope this gave you some inspiration. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's versions of the indoor Adirondack chair on the Facebook group, Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps. If you're not a member, we'd love for you to join. Have a great day. Goodbye. I'm back. I don't know, guys. I don't think I liked the brown arms. I'm going to just put green arms right over the top. I mean, this was supposed to just be a sample card, but it's actually kind of cute, so I'll probably finish it out. I don't know what for, what I'll put on the front, but... Anyway, I wanted to at least show that I think it looks better as all green. Okay, easy fix. Now, for reals, goodbye. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.